Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. Today's video is about the Polistes fuscatus, commonly known as the Northern Paper Wasp. We'll be watching the development of a wild nest that was discovered on May 11th of 2022 underneath the eaves of an old barn in northeastern Indiana, USA. This 15 minute video was filmed over a period of two days between May 11 and May 12, 2022. And we'll see the foundress or queen wasp building her nest with wood pulp, provisioning the nest with food and water, cooling the nest in the hot weather, and we'll even see a new egg appear in the nest. So here's our queen, Polistes fuscatus, the foundress of this nest. The nest is brand new, couldn't have been more than a day or two old at the most, maybe less. It only had three cells built so far, and there are about three eggs in it, one in each cell. The nest is hanging upside down from the eaves of an old barn, and as she flies away here, you can see the eggs. There's one egg in each cell, only three cells so far. A couple of the eggs are harder to see here at this angle, but you can easily see one of them at least. It was very unseasonably hot on this particular day, and she did a lot of work going out to collect fluids, water, and nectar. So you're going to see her here coming back and depositing some of the water and nectar directly into the cell. And you'll see there she left a pretty little globe of fluid. And that's typically nectar and water. And that will be used for food and energy, but it will also be used uh, to hydrate the nest. They also do this to thermoregulate the nest through evaporative cooling. So as the water droplets evaporate, they actually drop the temperature of the nest. After each foraging run like this, you'll see her groom her whole body from head to foot. Antennas, legs, abdomen, wings, everything. And she does this to remove any debris or dust or pollens or things on her body that she may have picked up during the flight. Wasps are really, really good at grooming their bodies and grooming their nest and their living space. And they keep them very clean. Uh, that helps minimize any problems with the developing eggs or disease. Here she's depositing fluid into the third cell there. You see that little globe of fluid and nectar she stuck to the side of that cell. Now she's off for another foraging run. And we tracked her to see where she was going on this one. And she ended up on a nearby fence post, an old weathered fence post in a garden. And you'll see she tucks a little ball of wood fiber pulp underneath her chin and she flies it back to the nest. This is what she's gonna use to build the nest with. It's actually made from wood and the enzymes in her saliva which soften it into a putty and then she uses that putty to sculpt each cell of the nest. And you're going to see her now start to build the fourth cell on this nest. She'll squeeze that wood pulp between her mandibles and with the mandibles she will sculpt a perfect cell. It's quite fascinating to watch. It's amazing how completely perfectly uniform she can make every single cell same size same shape and they can make dozens of these you see her going back and forth she's forming the lower basket and then she'll form the walls and raise the walls and make them taller it's amazing how fast they do this i'm going to speed it up here so you can see it in fast motion uh, it really illustrates the building process here back at regular speed you'll see her doing a little bit more sculpting on the other cells and she'll continually do this as the nest grows in size she'll continually maintain it continually make it taller so it starts out relatively short it gets taller and taller and taller as the larvae develop and then as the larvae pupate into what will become an adult wasp she makes the cell taller and taller to fit that growth it's a tremendous amount of work if you think about it for just one mama wasp to build, to lay eggs, to forage for food, forage for water. Like all mothers, I guess, she is extremely busy all the time. And you'll see half of that fourth cell has been built already. She will continue with that when she gets to it. In the meantime, she has other things she has to worry about, but you will see each one of these cells get completed over time. So let's see what she brings back on the next foraging run. It looks like it's gonna be a fluid deposit again. She just put a droplet into that lower cell. 
and now she's putting one into the brand new half a fourth cell that she built. So she'll continue to do this behavior throughout that hot day and make sure the nest is hydrated and properly provisioned and stays moist enough to continue with building. She's so busy she doesn't even see the visitor here creeping up on the edge of the right side of the frame. There's a constant array of neighbors coming by. Spiders, ants, mites, you name it. She will constantly fight those off when she sees them as they approach the nest. So you can see all the fluid droplets and nectar she's put into each cell. And now she's going to take a little nap. And we'll fast forward through this part and see what she's up to after her nap. So here she returns again to the nest after a foraging run. You can see in the upper cell to the right she drops a little nectar. You'll notice the previous droplets that she had put in there so far uh, often will evaporate. So throughout the day she'll have to just keep replenishing the fluids and the nectar and whatever she needs to provision the nest with. It's an ongoing process that kind of never stops throughout the warm weather. Here she starts fanning the nest a bit with her wings. They'll do this periodically throughout any hot day to help keep the temperature regulated in the nest. Here we've jumped forward in time to the next day, May 12th of 22. You'll notice she's already completed that fourth cell and laid an egg in it. And she's completed a fifth cell. There's probably an egg in there, we just can't see it at this angle. Now she's returning with wood putty that she collected out there, uh, probably on the local garden stakes and fence posts and wherever she can find weathered wood. And that putty that she's rolling in her mouth and manipulating now with her mandibles, she's going to use that to keep building the nest. So we're just going to watch her work a little bit here. She usually starts by inspecting the cells, figuring out which one she wants to work on, and she goes to it. And she's quite a good engineer and a good sculptor. Here she's lengthening this cell. And she's going to make it longer or taller. And so you'll see her putting that putty around the edges of that particular cell. And she works it very quickly and very efficiently. And that results in a stronger, taller cell than she had a moment ago. And we'll speed this up here a little bit so you can watch the process. So over about the next half a minute or so, we're just going to let her do her thing so we can watch how she does her job building this cell. You see the darker material is still moist, so it has a darker shade than the rest of the nest. That dries very quickly, so she has to work quickly, and she keeps regurgitating fluids sometimes to keep it moist while she works on it. But you can see it's starting to change back to the color of the rest of the nest as it dries. Now here we are again back in real time. Just cleaning up, getting ready to move on to another foraging run. Here she returns to the nest after another run and begins going to work on the nest with some more wood fiber putty. So we'll speed it up here so we can watch the progress. She goes through her usual cell inspection process and then decides to work on that cell on the right. You can imagine the huge amount of energy it takes to do this over and over and over again throughout the day as the nest grows and therefore it makes it clear why she has to provision that nest with so much nectar and continually forage for nectar for energy for herself. Here back in real time she cleans up from all her work and then she gets ready to head out again on another run. Here she returns with more wood pulp. She'll start doing her cell inspections and then she'll pick one to work on. We'll watch that in real time so you can see how rapidly she actually goes through this process. And she does this as the nest gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So here she chooses to work on the cell on the upper right and we'll speed this up a little bit and watch her work. So here in high speed, it'll take us about 40 seconds to watch her build this cell. And she raises up the wall to meet the height of the others that she's already raised up. And this process just continues. Pay close attention to her antennas 
while she goes through this process. She has no rulers. She has no T-squares. She can't understand the mathematics of this situation, but her antennas are actually super sensitive sensory organs that bring in a lot of information that she can work with in the world. They help her navigate whatever space she's in while flying or while on the ground or while building a nest, and they bring in a lot of other sensory input. Here back in normal time, she cleans herself up like always and gets ready to make another run. Here, because of the heat, she begins fanning the nest a little bit. This keeps the eggs in the nest cool. And she'll do this periodically throughout any hot day. It's called thermoregulation of the nest. And it's necessary for the health and survival of the nest. Here she returns with some more wood pulp, which she gathered out in the wild. And she'll use it to build her nest. You'll see her begin to start another cell after she does her cell inspections here. As she does her cell inspection, we'll talk a little bit more about thermoregulation. Thermoregulation of the nest is super important for the survival of the nest, and it happens in multiple different ways. We discussed a couple of them, like fanning the nest and the evaporation of water, which cools the nest, but also the way the nest is built. It's the actual structure of the nest has a lot to do with thermal regulation, and where the nest is located, where they decide to build it, uh, also has a great effect on environmental factors. So there is a certain WASP science behind all of this stuff. And the amazing part about all this is that the WASP is born to do this. They understand as soon as they come out of the pupating cocoon from the cell that they were born in, if you will, from egg to larva to pupation to adult worker WASP, they know exactly what to do when they come out and they, I think, learn more about what to do through being around the adult wasps who are already there doing it as well. So when they come out and even during the larval stage and the pupation stage, they feel the vibration of the adults walking around the nest and doing what they do. And there's a certain amount of built-in instinct to do this. And there's, there's a certain amount of learned behavior. So we'll speed up the rest of her building of this cell, save a little time here. Here's a sped up clip just showing the process of provisioning the nest with fluids. She has just come back from foraging and clearly picked up a bunch of fluids while she was out and she's now depositing them in each cell. She'll keep making passes over each cell, continually adding a little bit more fluid to each one as she goes around. Here at Green Wasp Removal, we like to help children learn about their natural world. Today we have a special guest, Kai, and Kai will help narrate the next clip for us. Go ahead when you're ready, buddy. Okay, so in this clip, we will see her bringing wood pulp back from foraging to finish up that cell on the left. All right, thanks, Kai. Good job. So for these next few clips, we're just going to put it on high speed while she does foraging runs. You'll see her make several trips to build new cells and to reinforce the existing cells. And here we'll bring in the sounds of the natural environment that she was working in. We'll let the sound play in real time while the video image shows her in high speed clips. We'll be monitoring this nest as it grows in the wild throughout the 2022 wasp season. We'll be shooting pretty regular update videos and we'll keep posting them to this channel. So stay tuned and have a good one.